I remember old George the Third, and um, I think he remembers us. I feel like we probably stand out to old George the Third. And that is a brief history of the royal family. Howdy, y'all. My name's Mike. I live in Houston, Texas. And today, as you know, the recent, the royal family's been in the news a lot. Even over here in the U.S., it has been. What I realized is I don't know the history of the royal family. And so I figured today would be a good day to sit down with some whiskey. I poured this a while ago. It had ice and it, it kind of melted. But it's cold. It'll work. Drinking some Crown Royal and I got a little Crown Royal cup. Check this out. It's got a little... Got a little state of Texas action going on. This is by CGP Gray. Uh, he makes really good videos, and so this should be pretty entertaining. So anyways, if you're drinking, get your cup up. Cheers. Super quick before we start this video, just want to give a real quick shout out to the Drunk Texan Says members. Thank you guys so much for helping out the channel. But anyways, let's get into this video. 1066, the start of the royal family on these fair isles. Well, there were kings and many countries before that, and druids before that, and Pangaea before that, but we have to start somewhere, and a millennia ago is plenty far. If that leaves out <laughs> Ethelred the Unready, so it goes. William the Conqueror conquered in the Norman Conquest, Norman here being code for French. Because it's the olden days, people had lots of kids, but to keep things simple, this family tree is going to leave out many of them on each branch, because not every child matters. So William had three kids we care. <laughs> about William II, Henry I, and Adela. If you've seen the video about royal succession, click here if you haven't, you'll know that formal rules for passing on the crown will get established, but for now it's a free-for-all home team advantage to the eldest son, but never forget, bigger army diplomacy. Upon William the Conqueror's death, William II became king. William II didn't marry, and on a bros day out with Henry, died in a hunting accident that gave Henry I the crown. Henry I had at least 26 children, of which only two were 100% legit. Two... what? How many? Gave Henry won the crown. Henry I had at least 26 children of... 26? 26? Ay, Dios mío. Ooh. Damn. 26. Woo which only two were 100% legit. He declared his daughter would rule next after his son died in a shipwreck and swore his knights to honor Empress Matilda by crossing their hearts, hoping to die, sticking a needle in their eye. But <laughs> when Henry I died while Matilda was in France, many ignored this while her cousin, Stephen, raced to Westminster using faster army diplomacy to get coronated first. Empress Matilda did eventually return and start a decades-long civil war that was pretty much a stalemate because turtling in the 1100s was an effective RTS tactic. While she did rule part of the island, as Matilda never had an official coronation, her monarchical status is disputed. Now, as Stephen's children were either dead, disinterested, or a nun, his crown went to his nephew, Henry II, who had four sons, Henry the Young, Richard the Lionheart, King John, and Jeff. Guess who died before his turn? Henry II saw the history thus far of conquering, assassination, maybe, usurpation, attritional war, and decided waiting until after the death of the current king before sorting out the next king didn't work. So Henry II changed the system and <laughs> crowned Henry the Young co-king with him, invoking the rule of two. One is none. Two is one. If it's important, mm -hmm. you need a backup. It yep. was a good plan for stability, helped Amen. by the young king's popularity, but unfortunately the apprentice rebelled against the master, rallying his brothers, which resulted in another civil war of disputed monarchs, during which Henry the Young died of dysentery, Henry the Elder died of mm. fever, and Richard I took the crown. After Richard came John and four eldest son successions in a row. John to Henry III, insert Magna Carta here, to Edward I, Longshanks to Edward II, to Edward III. Actually, Ed II was overthrown by Isabel of France, aka the She-Wolf of France, aka his wife. After deposing her husband, I can confirm, wives equal she-wolf, for sure. Like there, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. I say I will drink to that, hundred percent. They proved it on MythBusters, hundred percent accurate. Husband, she acted as regent for their son. Every one of these arrows glosses over a bit of complexity. Edward III had five sons, Edward the Black Prince, Lionel, John, Edmund, and Thomas, none of which would wear the crown. When Edward III died, his throne would have gone to the Black Prince, but he was dead at the time, so the crown went to his boringly named son Richard, now the second. There's a bunch of drama llama stuff around Richard II, which your English teacher might force you to read about, but spoiler alert, history's ending is always the same. Bigger army diplomacy. This time from Henry IV, who gets the crown, and Richard II gets starvation and captivity. Another Henry before we get to the War of the Roses, a war that strikes terror and boredom in the minds of students of history the nation over <laughs> who have to deal with this family tree simplify 
Whoa. You know what? I am not even going there. Fied to explain why everyone was angry. But the shortest version ever is Edward III's great great grandsons duked it out, even though one of them was dead for part of the fight. But we can't get into that now, so Henry VI to Edward IV to Henry VI to Edward IV, the end. Edward IV on his deathbed left his crown to his son, but being 12, he needed protection, so Richard, his bestest uncle in the world, promised to take super good care of him. Edward V then promptly disappeared under suspicious circumstances that left Richard to become Richard III. But he You know, it's not even funny. It's just kind of funny. It's a little funny. Like, I can see you have the entire UK kingdom to, to th rule, right? Why would you not take it? Right? <laughs> I'm going to drink to that. Nuts. He didn't stay king for long because Edward III's great-great-great-great-grandson Henry VII took the crown, put a ring on Elizabeth of York to lock down that royal legitimacy, and then sired Henry VIII, splitter of churches and oh, ladies. Henry VIII them. thought it was them. high time to formalize the rules of inheritance, so he wrote them out in his will, basically saying oldest boys first, girls only if there aren't any boys, and Parliament approved the rules, which should have made everything neat and tidy, but we're about to enter the really messy time. I just want to say that that's kind of cool that because in, in, in that time, women were, and I, I obviously don't think this, but I'm just saying women were not always viewed as equal for a while, right? I mean, it was like the 1900s when women actually even got to vote. You know what I mean? So it's, it's interesting that even that far back, they were okay with queens and, and treated them the same. And obviously today... They still, the queen is, you know, the queen of England, Elizabeth II. But I just think that's interesting. It's kind of forward thinking, like ahead of their time kind of mindset to have. It's pretty cool. Because Henry's son lived just long enough to screw it up, inheriting the throne at nine. There was, of course, a scheming protectorate running things, yet he still declared at 15 that his father's rules were dumb and his sisters were dumb and that his first cousin once removed, Lady Jane Grey, should be the next monarch instead. Then he died and Lady Jane Grey became queen at <laughs> sweet 16. Sort of, in a disputed status way, for nine days, until beheaded by Mary, the first really, truly, officially, nobody doubts it queen. Oh. Mary didn't have any kids and passed the crown to Elizabeth I, who became the second queen in a row to also not have children. But no problem, because Lady Jane Grey was next in, oh right. Now this is the point at which we acknowledge Scotland exists. They'd been doing their own royal thing, which for our purposes joins the English branch where Edward III's great-granddaughter married into it in the 1400s, and then goes James, 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 Mary Queen of Scots, James, bringing us back to the 1600s. Henry VIII's sister importantly also married into this line of the family, giving it English legitimacy points in the eyes of the English Parliament, which asked to borrow Scotland's James, making him king of two countries, with two numbers in his name depending on where you're counting from. James had a son, Charles I, and you might think this unification of the monarchs means the very messy time is over. But no because Cromwell. Cromwell didn't like kings and beheaded Charles I, declaring no royals no longer, making himself the Lord Protector, which was in no way like a king, even though he was in charge and it was a hereditary office passed to his son. But the Cromwells didn't last. <laughs> what if he, this, that always happens. That always happens. Is there's some guy comes in and says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make things better and I'm going to change some stuff. But really, they're just taking power. <laughs> Welcome to the planet Earth, right? Mainly because his son was a fancy country squire who didn't follow rule zero, keep the army happy, giving Charles's son, Charles II, the ability to re-establish the monarchy. Charles II had lots of children, all of which were illegitimate, leaving his brother, James II, next in line. But James II was Catholic, and ever since Henry split the church, Catholics had terrible approval ratings. But conveniently, he had nice Protestant daughters, one married to a Dutch prince, who by the nature of these things was the grandson of Charles. Charles won. Bonus English legitimacy points, plus who doesn't like the Dutch? With James so unpopular and William and Mary so popular, the army and nobles pretty much invited the royal couple to invade and James too fled. William and Mary ruled as co-monarchs, but without children the crown went to Queen Anne, who also didn't produce any heirs, though not from lack of effort. She was pregnant 17 times. Again, finding themselves with- Damn. 
A no royals no longer situation, Parliament decided it was really truly seriously the time to sort out the rules of inheritance, to avoid pretenders from every branch of this messy tree fighting over the crown. Parliament did a royal reboot to clear the cruft, defining Sophia of Hanover, the granddaughter of James Dual Numbers, to be the new starting point for all claims to the crown. These rules finally stuck, thus ending the very messy time. George I, son of Sophia, was the first king under the new rules, then his son George II to George III, and even even though he lost America and his mind, never fear, the rules are here, so the- Yeah. I remember old George III. And, um, I think he remembers us. I feel like we probably stand out to old George III. Cheers, George III. <laughs> uh, sorry the crown continued to calmly descend the family tree, going to George IV, who didn't have any surviving children, to William IV, who had ten children, all illegitimate, then passing through his dead younger brother to Queen Victoria, who started her reign in 1837 and made it to just over the finishing line of the 20th century, which is a doubly impressively long time given the state of medical technology then. After the end of her age, the crown wait, wait, wait. Let me see is this. a doubly impressively long time given the state of medical technology. Okay, so you. What the hell am I? Let's move on. Technology then. After the end of her age, the crown went to her son, Edward VII, to George V, to Edward VIII, who finally breaks up this neat and tidy and somewhat boring line of succession by committing a scandal, marrying a commoner, an American commoner, oh. an American commoner divorcee twice over. <gasps> Actually, the divorces were a real problem and weren't compatible with the monarch's role as head of state and also the Church of England in the 1930s. Edward abdicated to his brother George VI, who was reluctant to take the crown and then had to oversee World War II and the subsequent breakup of the British Empire, Ooh. which drained the reluctant king's health who died at 56, leaving the crown to Elizabeth II in 1952 at the hey. age of 25. Cheers to the queen. I can't, man, she's been the queen for forever. But I have a question. I have a question. So let me know in the comments, seriously, why would he, you abandon being the king for some American hussy? <laughs> you know what I mean, why would you abandon being the king to hook up with some chick from America? Don't hit, don't hit me with true love stuff. I don't want to hear that. You're the king of the United Kingdom. Why would you just give that up? And why did the other guy not want to be king? Maybe they, like, maybe they foresaw the issue of World War II. Like, I don't know. That's just, that's crazy to me. Seven years older than Victoria, her great-great-grandmother was on her coronation day, but in early September 2015, Elizabeth became the longest reigning queen in not just British history, but world history. From Elizabeth II, the crown continues on to Charles, the longest heir apparent, and William to his son George. And that is a brief history of the royal family. You know, that's, that's kind of confusing. But, I mean... Considering over a thousand years, that's not that, that's not that crazy. You know what I mean? I expected it to be crazier than that, honestly. Yeah, that was very interesting. Um, while it was pretty complicated and I couldn't re retell all that to you, um, it still wasn't as bad as I was expecting, honestly. So, uh, but, but it's interesting for sure. And um, it's crazy that, you know, thrown in there, there were people that gave up, you know, the ultimate power for something else. You know what I mean? And, and it goes to show what people will do, the people who did terrible things, allegedly, to get the crown. You know, so, I don't know. But, anyways, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, maybe consider leaving a like. Uh, and if you want to see more videos like this in the future... Hit the subscribe button. I post a video at least once a week. And I do live streams every week to two weeks. I kind of I wing them. <laughs> so, or we drink beers and have fun. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Be safe.